Hello, I'm Chris Unger, uh, your co-host for the second series of a Revolution in Education podcast, where we're trying to uplift the stories of revolutionaries, fellow revolutionaries like Miguel and Megan, on rethinking what school can look like, what teaching and learning can look like, what high school can look like where we're giving agency, uh, a sense of agency and opportunity for youth, rather than having them go through the seven period day, taking isolated topics like social studies, science, math, and English, but actually getting them immersed in the real world. So of course, we had to get Embark Education into the mix because as you'll hear, these students and youth are immersed in the real world. We'll hear directly from them. We have Aaron, Hayes, Elijah, and Jasmine on from the Embark Education uh, Schools or School or Learning Community, and maybe I should say it that way. And we're going to hear directly from them. But before, before we do that, I've got Megan Perry and Miguel Gonzalez, who I think co-founded or the Embark Education Learning Community, and they're doing something amazing and wonderful there. I hope they can serve as inspiration for others across the country to do likewise. But uh, let's start with them first so we can get a little background. Miguel and Megan, first of all, who are you and what is this thing that you're doing? Uh, I'm Megan Perry, and I'm the Director of Curriculum and Instruction at Embark Education. And um, I would say, in a nutshell, we're, uh, what we're doing is trying to rethink and reimagine what middle, what's possible in middle school education in a, in a deeply embedding learning in a deeply authentic context of a bike shop and a coffee shop. Cool. Miguel, who are you? Yeah, I'm Miguel Gonzalez, and I'm um, <clears throat> the director of Embark Education. Um, and Meg pretty much hit it right on the head is, you know, truly um, working to rethink what um, learning can and should be for, for middle schoolers um, and trying to, um, you know, create the context and, and co-design learning experiences for, um, for our learners um, in which they're never left asking, why am I learning this? Um, and sometimes we hit it right on the head and sometimes we don't, but it's a journey that we're in together. Um, and really, you know, really excited about what we've got going on at Embark and um, really supporting our students to, to understand who they are, um, how they fit into the world um, and being able to do it in a way that feels um, safe, exciting, and they still um, continue to have the passion for learning um, that oftentimes can, um, can be, start to be extinguished um, in middle school, going into high school um, and beyond. Yeah, how'd you get into this? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I came, um, came into Embark. Um, you know, I am a lifelong educator, um, but I think, you know, really what is important in my journey is reflecting upon my own learning experiences and, and really thinking about, um, you know, the times that I, like I fell in, love with learning um, were the times that were, were not traditional, um, were the times in which it was unstructured learning opportunities. Um, you know, I, I often tell the story about like the time that I really recognized um, what learning can be was when I was in high school and I was in a theater production class. And um, not being a theater person myself, I, um, you know, was tasked with um, helping create the set for the school musical, um, Pirates of Penzance. Um, and I would have never known Pirates of Penzance or theater or anything in that realm without this opportunity. And like, I came home from school um, after the, you know, after the teacher at that time had like said, like, you guys have to paint this set and we need this ready by, um, you know, the opening, opening day. And that was like mind blowing to me right, that there was this real meaningful product that needed to be done that people were counting on. Um, and then just being like set free on accomplishing that goal. Um, furthermore, I came home and I was like insistent that my parents come and see this play, uh, which like they, they were super confused because 
not being a theater person, they were like, what? Like, why would we go see a, like a, a high school musical that we don't know anybody in it? <laughs> and especially because like high school musicals, um, unless it's the TV show, are just not really like the highest quality of singing. Um, anyway, I was super proud to sit in, to, in that theater and watch my peers, um, you know, sing the best that they possibly could. And my parents were right there with me. And it, it was really hard for them to understand how meaningful that was for me. Um, and so like that really was kind of this catalyst of setting me on this journey that has um, ultimately culminated in Embark about um, crafting experiences with learners in which it was truly meaningful. They saw relevance. Um, they um, feel valued and trusted and um, are able to, to develop that sense of agency. And it's certainly been a winding path for me um, through my journey of being, uh, you know, an educator in a traditional school. I've been an international educator. Um, so, you know, spent, spent years overseas um, working in American international schools. Um, I've also worked in a central office position um, as well as like Montessori, um, a Montessori school leader. And so it's definitely been a winding path of, of discovery for myself, discovery of community, um, and really um, discovery of, you know, working with learners and, and recognizing that um, I'm not the expert um, and having that humility that it's rather that they're the experts and I can learn with them. Um, and my job is to, um, to support them and support all the educators at Embark um, to, to be able to like, you know, sometimes it's like putting the, the bumpers on the bowling alley um, and seeing, seeing what happens and, and leaning as far into it as we can. Cool. Meg. Um, I, you know, I, I think, I, I think back to at like being a high school student myself, similar to Miguel and, and I, I grew up, my, my dad was a, a high school educator turned administrator, uh, you know, my entire, my entire life. And I, I can remember being in high school thinking like, why would you want to teach physics at that point? He had been teaching for 20 years. Like, why would you, why would you do that? I don't get it. Um, and it wasn't until I was in college and I was interested in, in politics and policy and I was taking a, a class in children and social policy or something along those lines. And I had this light bulb moment that it was never about the physics, right? That it was always about the students and that every year um, was an entirely different experience and, um, and an opportunity to have a really wide impact on individual students, but also on um, also on society that like education is this, you know, fantastic social policy lever. And, and so from there, I, I started to um, pursue education and, and the school that I happened to, that I was at the University of Rochester, I sort of lucked into a teacher education program that happened to be really progressive um, and constructivist. And the, with um, faculty who were very much steeped in the coalition of essential schools and um, Ted Sizer's work. And so I had this sort of like also parallel moment of like realizing that even though I was a relatively successful um, traditional high school student in a traditional school, that there were so many different ways that that could have got, that that could have been different. Um, and that for me and for, and for other people. And so I, um, you know, sort of by luck ended up in this place where I got a, a really progressive grounding in what education could and should be about, you know, that it's really about essential learnings and thinking about, um, you know, the context um, and uh, the way that we construct learning in the classroom. And, you know, as I look back now, you know, Miguel talked about his being fairly winding and I've had a variety of different experiences, again, a career educator um, from the moment of that realization about what education really is. Um, but it's actually been, um, it's at mine has sort of not been and all that winding. I ended up in a series of progressive schools, including two different um, high schools in the New Tech Network, where I was um, on the ground at the beginning of both of those schools and creating project-based learning experiences for ninth through 12th grade students and, and had the opportunity to work for um, PBL works, coaching schools and districts and teachers in designing meaningful project-based and high-quality project-based learning experiences for students. And, um, and came back 
to schools um, in the last, I guess, two years after having been out of the classroom and schools for a while in that nonprofit coaching space, um, realizing that like, for me, school is really where like the, the, is the unit of change in education and where the rubber meets the road, at least in our current system. Um, I think there's an argument to be made that really the learner is the unit of change, but in our current structures, um, you know, thinking about how do we shift the definition of school to be more learner centered um, and feel super grateful to be on this journey at Embark of really uh, I think pushing the boundary of what authentic and sort of whatever we, the phrase we use is embedded learning looks like. So, um, cool. Yeah. Wow. Well, I want to get into how the, uh, how, how this all came to, together, but let's get the, let's get the, the kiddos involved. All right. Elijah, Jasmine, Hayes, and Aaron. What is going on at this place? What is what is this place? What happens and why are you there? Who wants to start? Elijah, go. Um, I guess the reason I came to Embark was because, well, I came last year, so in seventh grade. So I had one year at a, like a conventional, or like ordinary middle school for sixth grade. And I kind of came over because it, it sounded like a really good experience to make learning not just something that you go to sleep, go to school, come back, do homework. And it actually makes it like I want to go to school and I actually want to learn and expand my knowledge about things in the world that are interesting, not just out of like a, a book and actually experience it. So what are you learning? Um, in science right now, we're learning about like uh, power, kinetic energy, and like speed and all those equations. And we're using bikes for that from the bike shop. And in, in the past, we've, um, yeah, used the bikes for science and other things like that. So, you know, kinetic energy, power, and all that stuff still sounds, uh, I'm going to be kind of uh, playful here. So forgive me with that. Uh, it still sounds kind of boring. Is it boring? Uh, no, because it's it's actually not that boring because we've been doing a bunch of experiments about it. Like um, we learned about speed by pushing weights across the floor and calculating our own speed or like how much power we're producing. And okay. yeah. Yeah. What, how is it different in Embark? I mean, it sounds like that can happen in any middle school. So why are you in what Why? How is it different in Bart? I'm going to push you guys on this. I really need you to like zero in on how is this different here? Like that could happen in a classroom in middle school, right? Okay, it's different because although like some of the things we might be doing might be similar, we actually time on it. And the teachers like Rusty, our science teacher, or Carissa, they spend more time to individually work with us to really expand on our thinking about each each experiment or project we're doing so that we can really go deeper and find information and expand our knowledge. Oh, so they work with you. How do they work with you individually? Don't they, don't they have a lot of students? Do they have time to work with you individually? Um, they work with you um, like math as an example. It's not based on grade. It's based on like what level of math you are. So. I'm in a math with two other students. There's other math groups. I don't know exactly who's in it, but you work on it not based on grade, as I said, based on like how well you can do it so that you're really learning what you need to learn, not just like, not something that's way too easy or way too hard. So you're, it's really tailored to the fact of what you need to learn. Mm. Aaron, Hayes, or Jasmine, you wanna build on Elijah and what he's talking about? How is it different there? How is teaching and learning different there? Go ahead. Um, so for an example, um, writing and reading, like, like uh, we'll have reader writer conferences with Krissa, our English teacher. And like, for example, like I've really gotten to talk about her with about like what I've wanted to write about and like learning more about those topics. And I think that's really cool. And like choosing our own books and getting to talk about her getting to talk to her about those books that we read. So yeah, that's. Hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. So again, I'm gonna. It, it, this wouldn't happen in middle school, you don't think? No, because at before Embark, I never got to choose the books that I wanted to read, and we didn't really talk. I didn't talk one on one with my teacher. It was just kind of a whole group thing, and we didn't really go deep into what the book was about. And mm. yes, we do that at Embark. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, does that sound familiar to you, or? Um, I agree. I went to a somewhat traditional school last year, and in my English class, I've always like, I've, I've always really loved reading and writing. It's also like my thing. And in my English class last year, I learned nothing. And I got through maybe one book the whole year in the class, and I've gotten through 16 so far this year. So I've, in the books I've been reading, I'm interested in. And I read because I want to and it counts for class. And I've improved all of my writing skills where last year I was doing things I'd done years ago and I was repeating things and I wasn't learning and I wasn't advancing. And now I'm advancing and I'm I'm evolving and like I'm changing. Like my writing skills are getting better and I'm like reading more than I was last year, much more. And I feel much more, I, I, I'm a lot happier here in my classes. I feel, I feel very, I feel much, I feel very prepared for like high school and eighth grade and everything. Well, being happier, I don't think is a small thing. I think if we put that on a, a checklist of school, right? If you know, are the kids happy? Check yes, check no, and if if it's not, if it's no, something's wrong. But we'll get into that. We'll get back in it back, right? I, I kind of like that a lot. Jasmine, you were gonna throw, get into the mix here. Yeah, I was kind of gonna connect it with like our reading and writing. It is really different than like a traditional school because like in our ELA class, we'll all be reading like the same book, and it takes like half a school year to finish that book. And here I embark, it's like everyone's reading their own independent different book that they choose from, from like our library or bring from home. And they spend their time like um, reading it when they want to. And it kind of also connects with like our schedule. So like Hayes can be reading while I'm like in a math class. And it's just really different because we like um, Aaron was saying, we have reader writer conferences with our English teacher, which is Carissa, and we get to like um, read and then like really dig into like our book with her when we have independent time with her. It's just it's just really different. So what led you guys to? Uh, oh, Megan, you were gonna. Ask well, you. I was just gonna say there might be more. I would be curious. I don't know, Jasmine or yeah, please Elizabeth. get in. The question, you know, Jasmine brought up the the thing about schedules, and I just wonder that is actually a, also a huge piece about what's different at Embark. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you guys want to talk about um, talk about that, share your experience about like how we do how we do schedules and what that's like for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, I enjoy the schedule at Embark. It's like you get a schedule how you want to be scheduled. We definitely have like class periods or like slots that we have filled like where we have science or math but then we have like blank spaces in our schedule where we can decide what we're going to do during that time so we can schedule like uh 10 we can be doing math follow-up and then while other people may be in like a uh, shop shift so it's just really different because not everyone's doing the same thing uh, every single time. Why is that? Why is that a good thing? I was gonna say that's a good thing. In in my case, I like it because sometimes I have made like my math. It, like it's obviously getting harder. So sometimes I would I want to do my math a little bit later in the day when I'm at, more awake. So because like preference based, hopefully my brain will be more awake and I'll do better. Or I I can skip. I will have like a science lesson at 1030. This is an example. And I can move anything to where I want it. So if I have grammar to do, I can do that when I want it. If I if I just have a like a break a uh, free time, I can take a break and just like have a snack or something and read. 
so you can it, it's beneficial to me because I feel I can really make it when I like when I'm ready to do something not just oh I'm really tired but I, I have to go do math or I have to go do this it it makes me feel very like it's kind of it's stress-free it lets you know that you're gonna have time to do everything what else about the school that I'm missing? I don't really don't know much about the school. So you guys uh, can tell me and everybody else is listening. Hayes, go for it. How would you describe the school? Um, a big part of the school is our work in the shops. So there's a coffee shop called Pinwheel and a bike shop called Framework. And the students are split up into both of those. So some students go into Pinwheel maybe twice a week and they get to learn how to make new drinks and they get to interact with the baristas and sometimes the customers. Um, like I've learned how to um, pull shots of espresso and um, it's really fun. And then in framework, the students, like we learn how to fix up bikes and they're like, we get to help repair customers' orders and it's really fun. So yeah, it's a big part of Embark. I also work in Pinwheel at the moment and it is fun. It's really cool to like, cause I had like, I knew nothing about coffee before. And like, I know all these things now. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, it was like, I never really liked coffee. I don't like coffee, um, but it's really fun being able to like go and make the drinks for the people that enjoy coffee and just being able to like get to know the baristas and everything. And it's just really fun to try something different, even though like I don't like it. Um, it's just really fun, and also like being able to incorporate the shops in our learning. Well, tell me a little bit about that. You say you incorporate the shops in your learning. What do you mean by that? Yeah. What's an ex give me an example. For example, like Jasmine was talking about working with the baristas. Um, for example, we work with Joe and Dot a lot because we've started this thing called a uh, pinwheel post where students write pieces and then they put them up on pinwheel and like we work with joe and dot a lot because like joe gives us ideas about what to write about and then dot also works with students on art and so yeah well as you go um i i personally i agree with all those things and i wanted to connect they were connecting pinwheel um, with framework. Like they said, we've been learning how to fix bikes and something cool that we've been doing is that there's a non, uh, what's it called? A nonprofit organization called the Oculus Club and they've given us a number of bikes to fix for them. So that's cool. So we're helping our community and fixing bikes for children, I guess. And mm. also we're trying to plan um, two days where we go to schools like uh, a couple schools, there's a school called Sandoval, like, I don't, um, um, close to us, and we're going to go and f uh, they can, the kids can bring in their bikes and we're going to fix them for them. So like the community out outreach is really cool, how we're helping the community. You like that? Because we have access. Yeah, we use the framework and they don't. Yeah. Why is that valuable to you? Why do you like, what, what's, what's behind that? Uh, it's valuable to me because it you feel like you're really helping because they might not have access to learn how to do these things and we do. Mm. It's mm. helpful to them if they um, if they need their bike fixed or like or need or we can teach them about it how to change a flat things simple things like that and it, it feels it feels good to know that you're helping someone. Someone else want to pop in here about the. The different kinds of projects and things you're doing there that you you're getting a lot out of like Aaron what is the thing that you when you think about being at Embark what's the most valuable thing to you like related to community and giving back yeah or other things I mean what do you what why okay let's put it this way I'm gonna say to you Aaron uh, this school seems a little too odd, Aaron. I don't think you should be in this school anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna send you back to regular middle school. How do you respond to that? Um, I'd say, well, no, first off. <laughs> um, well, this isn't as much about as community. It's more about like 
what what I see like yeah. what's important about Embark to me like it's more about my learning and I care about my learning experience and I want to be prepared and Embark helps me and prepares me for that. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. How is it that Embark helps you care about your learning? What, what is it about? Why, why do you care about your learning at Embark? I mean, because I care about my learning in general. So what stops you from that when you're in re regular middle school? Because in, in a traditional middle school, like they wouldn't focus on you as a student as much as Embark does. Mm. And how do you feel Embark's preparing you? You said also that it helps you, prepares you. How is it preparing you? I feel like in everything, like from like pinwheel and framework, like real real world experiences in our app learning like math and um, reading and writing focuses more on us and where we are and where we need to be to like learn more. And yeah, just more our pace. Mm. Hey, I'm gonna ask you the same question. What is of greatest value to you? And if they said you need to go back to a traditional middle school because this school sounds too crazy, how would you respond? Mm -hmm. um, I think that lot, I think a big part of it for me is the size. Um, both of the schools I've gone to in the past, like for elementary and last year, they're pretty big comparably comparably um and it, it was stressful like i felt i felt stressed to um be friends with everyone and to like be popular sometimes and also it's just like it was a lot a lot of people um a lot of classes like rotating classes a lot um and i feel like i can focus on learning and like having fun here at Embark compared to like a bigger school, like um, where I'm worried about getting to class on time. And then in class, I'm not focused, I'm stressed, and I don't get work done. Um, I don't think, I, I'm much more productive. I am like, I'm enjoying the stuff that I'm doing where like I, I really wasn't last year. Mm. Mm. Powerful. What's what's of greatest value to you in the school? What do you appreciate mm -hmm. the most? The one-on-one -on -one time with the teachers. Okay, so one of the things that I came in as a big, you know, my pers my my viewpoint of the school was around the fact that you had a coffee shop and a and a, and a bicycle shop, which obviously you guys appreciate a lot. But I'm hearing a lot more right now. I'm hearing a lot about the fle flexibility of the schedule. I'm hearing that teachers are focused on you as students. You're able to pursue things that you care about, that are of your choice. You care about your learning, which is, you know, is fantastic. And in some ways, what I've heard is traditional school got in the way of your learning. And in this case, you have teachers and others there at your at Embark. They care about supporting you in the learning that you want to engage in. Meg and Miguel, what have I not asked that we need to ask these for? I mean, one of the things I would say, Chris, is that, that you did hit, you hit it uh, pretty well on the head as far as like, yeah, Embark is designed with the coffee shop and the bike shop to make the learning relevant, but it's not about the bikes and the coffee. It's about our students. And that to me, like everything that you, you know, are taken away and everything that they shared is like, that is affirming. That's affirming an affirmation that um, the bikes and the coffee are certainly an important element, but it's really not about that. And so I, I, I definitely appreciate that, um, like raising that up to the surface. And then as far as questions go, I think one thing that I would ask you know, I shared, I opened up the conversation today around like one of the most memorable experiences that I've had in, in recognizing that learning can be different, but in fact, I'm learning. So my question to you guys would be, um, what has that moment been for you um, at, at Embark? 
where it maybe was non-traditional, but you recognized, oh my gosh, this is really cool. And I am learning. Um, it, it's not that big, but one of the moments I more remember was the beginning of this year when I moved up a math group, because last year I was in the second or a different math group than this year, I moved up a level. And I just really remember how much Rusty like, helped me one-on-one -on -one and really tried to catch me up and really it was really kind and helpful. So I would be, I, I was able to participate and learn. And it, it really felt, it, it felt good because I knew in a normal school, I would never get that. You would just, you'd have to take a couple tests and then you could maybe move up a higher math class or something like that. And he, it was really helpful because the one-on-one -on -one support really got me to where I needed to be. Go ahead, Hayes. Yeah, jump, jump in, feel free to jump in. Um, mine is probably, uh, at the beginning of the year, like, or like towards the beginning of the year, um, when like I found out that we didn't have assigned like books or writing prompts and we could choose our own and we had like creative freedom. That was like really exciting for me. And I, it was so different for me because I've never been able to choose my own books or writing prompts or like essay topics. Um, and this, yeah, that's probably one of my favorite learning moments. Yeah. Mine's kind of similar to Hayes, um, like towards the end of the year, or towards the beginning of the year, um, when Carissa was telling us like how we could choose our books and stuff, it was just really helpful because also Carissa helps us like to like see the books we read and like we'll recommend books. They're like, oh yeah, this one is one like you would really like. And you can just really go into like a specific stuff with her, like about your book and how like you guys can do different writing prompts. And it's just really different because I feel like I would have never like gotten that option. I really did not like reading. Um, and now like when I came to Embark, I enjoyed reading more because I get to read what I want to read. Um. Mine is also about reading and writing. It was like, it was when I was struggling with writing and Carissa told me that that was okay and I could focus more on reading. And I think that really helped because because of me reading more, my writing improved. And I just thought that was really cool. Well, who would have thought? A bunch of middle school students saying they, lo they, they love reading and writing. <laughs> That's fun. That Meg, you want to, I have one final question after Meg, if you have one question. I guess I wonder about, um, you guys have talked about like reading and writing and math. Um, but I wonder about, you know, what other things, what other things that, that you're learning at Embark that are not about like reading or writing and math, like whether it's in the shops or, um, I mean, in movement or like, at, you know, at, in our downtimes at lunch, like what are the other things that you're, that you're learning that you think are, are preparing you or that you feel are valuable to you that aren't like, again, that are not like specific to like learning, you know, your reader at our conferences with Krista or your math lessons with her. Um, I think that collabor collab <laughs> collaboration because we really get to connect with like everyone. And it's just really fun to like be able to get to know everyone and like for lunch movement and everything. Like we get to know everyone like individually. So I'm like, we never feel left out. Yeah. Um, something else that uh, is like building community. And I think that's really important and like our community building projects and like really getting to know everyone. And yeah. Um, kind of connecting to what Jasmine said, I was gonna say like our movement, instead of just like a regular PE class where you like get a unit and do it and then get graded on it, it's like actually fun and you get to, you get to choose between some groups that you could do and you move and get exercise and it's, it's actually fun, not just like boring and yeah. Hey, is anything you're, you're learning that's not just about math and science or English and reading? 
Yeah. Um, to add on to Elijah, a movement has been really fun uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, what, what movement do we? We did movement within our classes. And so we'd go to the park or like play games in our classroom with like uh, what was called outside. Uh, we played capture the flag a couple of times uh, with the whole school. And now we have like a new system where we're divided up into groups, like mixed with other classes. Um, and so right now I'm in team sports. And so we go to the, we go to the park twice a week and we get to play like soccer or basketball or like any other fun team games together. There's also a biking group and a group that walks around the town and looks at things. So yeah. Cool. Well, I know we're almost out of time here. I do have a final question for each of you. If each of you, and I'll leave Miguel and Meg with the last one so the students have to go first. Here's the question. If there was one thing that could happen to improve schools as we know it now, given your experience in Embark, what would be the one thing you would implore, implore that's a vocabulary word, by the way. Implore means ask other educators, teachers, principals, school leaders, and district leaders. If you were to be on a stage in front of 300 teachers and school leaders and district leaders, and you got to tell them one thing to say, if you really wanted to make school work for kids, the one thing I would ask you to do, given my experience in Embark, is I'll give you 20 seconds to think about that. You're in front of 300 teachers, school leaders, district leaders. Given your experience in Embark, to say the one thing I would want you to consider changing in schools so it really works for kids is? Who wants to go first? Elijah, go. Um, what I would say is, I mean, I may, maybe this has been said a lot by other people in the world, but like a smaller class size, because not like obviously you can't have a student, um, a teacher to every student, that's impossible. It, but I think if classes were a little bit smaller, like instead of 20 kids, maybe like 10, 12, 13, something like that, it would it would really make it easier for teachers and students to work one-on-one -on -one so that instead of just one big curriculum, kids could be really getting what they need at their own pace. Okay, mine's kind of connecting with Elijah's, um, the like smaller school, schools and like classes and like also the one-on-one -on -one time with just like the one student that needs like extra work or extra, extra like help with the work so just being able to have like the smaller classes and just one-on-one -on -one time with your teacher to be able to talk about what you need to talk about would be good so that like you don't feel stressed or like forced I guess to like um like what you're learning. Yeah. Um, for me, I'd say just letting students like slow down sometimes, um, like understanding that it's not easy to move from class to class to class right away without time to take a break, to process like what you just learned. Um, to like maybe talk to someone you actually want to talk to, um, to like sit down and like read or like um, just just like like I just wish teachers would let students take their own minutes, like five minutes to relax and do what they need to do. Um, I would say just be understanding of the of the student and like things that they go through inside of school and outside of school. Cause like, I mean, that like their learning depends on that. And so, yeah, just like, don't be upset if they don't get one thing, be understanding, like, yeah. 
Okay, Miguel and then Meg, and I'll have a closing word. Miguel, you are in front of 300 teachers and the school leaders and district leaders, and you would tell them based on your experience in Embark, the one thing you would want to implore them to think about or consider is? You can hear it in all of their answers, <clears throat> which I love. Um, it's that, you know, to recognize the brilliance that is the human in front of you. Um, they are brilliant at their own space, like at their own pace and at their own time, but there is an inherent brilliance in all of them. And coming at that from a place of recognizing and building relationship um, is everything we heard today, is that the most powerful piece that we have in Embark is that we are not teaching them, um, but rather learning with them. And um, I would implore that people recognize the power of that um, in recognizing that we are working as, as humans first. Um, and it's not about schooling, but rather about learning. Mm. How am I supposed to follow that? <laughs> Um, I, I think related to that, um, bu building on that idea of the humans in front of them is like that, that we are humans in the world and that um, creating, not creating, but leveraging our, our context. And, and, you know, we've created this context of a coffee shop and a, a school that is a coffee shop and a bike shop, but leveraging their, the, the humans, the world of the humans that is in front of you to, um, to create and expand um, their learning experiences. Well, it's been fantastic. I want to uh, thank you, Elijah, Hayes, Aaron, and Jasmine for coming on and lending your voice to this podcast series. Miguel and Meg, I was really glad to have done this because uh, at first sight, one can think, oh, this is cool because there's a coffee shop and there's a bike shop. But, uh, and that is cool, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but actually, the coolest thing about Embark that I am learning and taking away from today is that the people there that are working with them are looking at students as young adults who are growing into their own being that they want to learn and you're giving and affording them the community and the opportunity to learn what they want to learn, having choices in what they're learning, how they want to learn. And they're getting one-on-one -on -one and small group mentoring, assistance, support. And more importantly, you're seeing them as, as young people growing up and that your job, if I could put it that way, or your, cha your, your charge, is to assist and support the growth of each of those individuals and not to see them as having deficits and not to see that you have a factory to run and then make sure that the trains run on time and that people's deficits are fixed, but rather each of these children or each of these youth are growing into these young adults. And what's my role and responsibility to support the system to become who they wanna become? So I want to thank you with that. You guys were fantastic and wonderful. We got to get more of the word out around what you're doing. And I want to, I will implore educators and school leaders and district leaders to go see what's going on at Clark. So thank you all for being on the podcast. You were wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, thank you guys. You, thank you. Appreciate it.